Online earnings can be a very controversial topic. And recently, in response to this video I published, where I discussed my lifetime earnings for books I'd published on Amazon, I received this comment. So I wanted to discuss this comment in a bit more depth, but more importantly, I wanted to show you something that may change your perspective on how to look at earnings from a business that creates digital products to sell online and may indeed change your views on running an online business. Now, if you've not been to this channel before, then welcome. My name is Paul Miles and I do videos on how to make it, keep it and grow it. And that's your money I'm talking about. And if you do like videos like that, then please do give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell. So I received this comment. Now, the second half of this comment, I can't quite understand, but it's the first half that I wanted to look at in a bit more detail. And it said this, $140,000 for four years is small penny. 140 minus taxes equals around $100,000 maximum. And this money is divided by four years and equals 25K per year. And this is with 2,000 published books. This is very sad. So first of all, I want to look at something that's incorrect and that's around the taxes. Now, if you did earn $140,000 in one year, yes, you may be left with $100,000, but this wasn't earned in one year. It was over a number of years and this is going to be the case going forward. So if we take that amount over four years, we could say, OK, $35,000 per year. So I ran this through a few online tax calculators and came up with these figures. So $35,000 after tax in the USA comes out to around $30,000. Now, this was for the state of New York. Now, I know it does vary in different states. I'm not sure if New York is actually a, a higher taxing state than others, but it came out to this figure. In the UK, $28,500. Australia, $29,500. So I think we could safely say this works out after tax to around $30,000. Now, yes, I know all different countries have different tax rules and it's going to be different in different countries, but we're just going to take an average here for these three countries. So if you then multiply that by four years, you're left with $120,000 after tax and not the $100,000 it says here. So the next statement made here is that this is small penny. So I decided to have a look and compare this to the average incomes around the world. And so we have this table and it would come in at around position 29, South Korea, just below the average earnings for somewhere like Italy, but higher than average earnings for countries like Brunei, Spain, Portugal, Saudi Arabia, Greece, etc. And, you know, a lot of my viewers come from countries like India, Bangladesh, and Morocco, where you can see that the average wage is a lot, lot less than this $35,000 per year. And also a lesson that I've learned is that it doesn't matter where in the world you live. It's not so much about what you earn, but about what you spend. And that makes a difference when it comes to building wealth and achieving the goals that you actually want to achieve. So this sort of statement actually makes me quite angry because this is a very blinkered view of what's going on in the world. And I think quite an arrogant statement to make. Now, the next bit of this comment, it says here, this is with 2000 published books. This is very sad. Now, I'm not sure what the sad component is, but this kind of implies that I spent four years creating these books as a full time job and earning this amount of money. When in fact, I created the bulk of these books within the first 12 to 18 months of starting this business. And it wasn't as a full-time job. I did this as a side hustle and it was whilst I was working a full-time job. And that's the beauty of a lot of these types of businesses. You can start them, you can do them as a side hustle to your main job. So those books I created early on have gone on to bring in this income, which brings me onto this concept here of passive income. And this is where I want to start changing your perspective on how to look at incomes from these types of businesses where you are creating digital products, you're publishing them online and they sit on a platform and wait for customers to buy them. 
this can be on platforms like Amazon, Etsy, Redbubble. There's many different types of platforms. You could even do it on your own website. Yes, you may have to get some work to bring in traffic, but platforms like Amazon, where they provide you with a lot of traffic, pro products literally sit there, wait for people to buy them. Now, I have heard experts, financial experts say that, you know, there's no such thing as a passive income. But let me show you this. This is my best selling book. I published this on June the 3rd, 2018 and has brought in since then total royalties of $39,916. Now, I haven't had to do anything to that book since I published it. I've never run ads on it. I've never changed the cover, never changed the interior. I barely look at it. I occasionally look to see where it's ranking or what its best sellers rank. That's it. So I would consider that a pretty passive income. Now, there are other ventures that can bring in what's often deemed as a passive income. There's things like dividend stocks where you invest money in the stock market and those stocks bring in an income. Now, that may require some work because you've got to you know, decide what you're going to buy, decide what you're going to sell, and you've got to monitor those stocks. But it can be pretty minimal. Then there's things like books. I just showed you the example of my book. And there's other things like songs. And this is fun to look at. Anyone recognize this chap? Well, it's Noddy Holder. And he's the lead singer of a band called Slade, who in 1973 published the hit song, Merry Christmas, Everybody. And it's estimated that he currently earns, or the band currently earns, between 500,000 to 1 million pounds a year, which equates to around $600,000 to $1.2 million per year. So I'm sure there's still a little bit of work that may need to be done with that, but I would say that a big chunk of that is pretty passive. Then you've also got things like people that hold patents that can bring in as well passive income. Now, when I break down the sales of my best-selling book, just to reiterate this, 2019, I received an income of just under $1,500. 2020, just over $11,500. 2021, just over $15,000. And then 2022 was similar to 2020. So again, no work has been put in. This has brought in a steady income. So when I look at income like this, I always ask myself this question. How much would I need as a lump sum, a pot of money, how much would I need invested to bring in an equivalent amount of money, which in this case is $35,000? Well, I'm going to work on the premise that we get about a 7% per annum return on our money. Why 7%? Well, I took this figure as being somewhere halfway between a 4% annuity where you get a fixed income. You invest something like a, a pension pot into that and you get this fixed income. And 10% S&P 500 annual returns if you invested it into something like an ETF. Why 10%? Well, I looked at the figures. They do vary if you take 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. But it comes out to around that 10% mark. And that comes out to $500,000. You would need a pot of money that amounts to $500,000 to bring in around $35,000 per year. 7% of 500,000, 35,000. Now, in reality, you would actually need a bigger lump sum than this because not only would you want to take a percentage as income, but you'd also want to have a percentage of that growing that pot of money as well to account for it inflation. Nowadays, you'd need a decent additional amount of um, return to cover the amount that you'd be losing due to inflation. So the next thing we can look at to put this into even more perspective is how much would we need to save per year to get to that $500,000 mark? And that's if we saved money and it was growing at that 10% annual growth that we worked out from the S&P 500. So how much would we need to save per year to get to $500,000? And these are the figures. You would need to save $27,000 per year over 10 years, or $7,800 over 20 years, $2,750 over 30 years, or $1,020 per year over 40 years. Now, I did read a recent report that said 46% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck and couldn't find $1,000 
in cash in an emergency. So these are not insignificant amounts of money. So creating these books over that 18 months of work, I've put two years here, has brought in an income that's equivalent to a lifetime of savings. So the last part of this comment, this is very sad. Well, I'd have to disagree. I would say it's not sad at all that you can start a business and bring in a passive income that equates to a lifetime of savings. Now, there's also some other things to look at when building a business, and that is the skills learned. You can use these skills that you learn to start and create other online businesses. I did it. I went on to create a YouTube channel and hopefully the skills I've learned from creating books, from doing a YouTube channel, I will then use to go on to create yet another business. But you can use skills you learn to do things like provide graphic design services, provide services as a book cover designer, or become expert in a component of creating books. Could be using something like Adobe Illustrator and create a course around this. So you can see how learning skills is an investment in yourself, which you can then use to create other types of businesses. And more importantly, it's not all just about the money. This business, well, I find it's fun. And I know a lot of people that write to me also find it's fun. And when you're doing something that's fun and that's creative, it doesn't seem like a job at all. It doesn't seem like work. So you can see that when looking at an online business, looking at the income, you need to change your perspective on how you view that income but also look at the additional benefits from creating a business, creating an income, and also hopefully having fun at the same time. Now, if I have piqued your interest around creating a business of publishing low content and medium content books on Amazon, then I do have this playlist here where I go through the whole steps of creating these types of books and publishing them onto the uh, Amazon platform. Thank you much for your time. It is very much appreciated. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and until next time, goodbye.